Hey everybody, Ashton here from Without Code, introducing our new carousel slider widget for Architect. This is a really cool widget and a unique form of a slider in that it's a carousel, meaning unlike a regular slider that generally just shows one image at a time, here you get this carousel display to see what's coming next and what just passed. And even better, our widget allows you to set the number of slides that will be in view at once. Our live demo here shows a variety of display options available through our widget. You've got the classic carousel structure here on the top, but we can scroll down and see our cover flow option, which has the images kind of turning into place in a 3D way, which is awesome. We've got more of a banner layout here with multiple images present at once. We've got one here with vertical transitions, which is really unique. And lastly here, we've got full height. Now this one is similar to our widget called Superhero Slider, where you can set it to be full height. We can see that if I shrink down the height of my browser, that the slider adjusts accordingly, only filling that exact amount of space no matter what. Now this is a simple widget to use, but very powerful with lots of parameters. So let's jump over to Architect and we'll take a closer look. Let's dive into our widgets panel and we'll scroll down to Media and we'll grab our carousel slider widget and drop it onto a new row on our page. Great. Now by default, this will fill the max amount of space allowed for your row here, but do remember that you can always set your row to full bleed if you wanna give this carousel a full width display. Simply click up here on row and then select edit design and then toggle on full bleed row. And just like that, you can have it full width but I'm gonna to toggle this back off for now. Now let's open our settings panel for the slider. First option, as usual, we have our unique ID. Just make sure to enter something here that's unique to any other instance of this widget on the page so the browser can differentiate it. Next is your slide setup. Now there are four preset up list items here by default. Let's click into the first one. We have a default image here, but we can easily swap that out by clicking replace. And that'll give us the option to search stock images or upload your own. I'll just do a simple search for something different here. I'll search for trees. And uh, let me just pick one of these here. Perfect. And down here you have the option to enable the slide caption as has been done here and customize the caption here. And you can also enable a caption link if you wanna redirect your user upon click. Now the other ones are pre-set up the exact same by default, but let me make them unique now just for the sake of demo. I'm gonna to click to list item two, and let's replace the image with something else. There we go. And I'll change our caption to welcome. List item three, let me replace the image again. Great. Caption, I'll put to my and list item four, I'm gonna leave this image alone, but let's make the caption website. Perfect. Now let me just close the settings panel for a moment and we can see our image is already updated with our new captions as well. And if we jump up into preview mode really quick, we can see that it's already functioning beautifully as we scroll through. So back to editor, let's jump back into that settings panel. Slider height. Now let's talk about this for a second. This of course determines the height of the carousel gallery, but there is another factor to consider here. Before setting this up, you wanna give some thought to the aspect ratio of your images, whether you want them to be tall, wide, or square like they are now. The aspect ratio of your images will fall in sync based on a couple of factors, the width of your slider, the height of your slider, as well as the number of images and the viewport width of the user. All of these things will impact the aspect ratio as it appears in the browser. So for example, we just previewed this as is, showing a somewhat square aspect ratio for our images. But let's say we were to shrink down the width of the carousel, which is not done in the panel, it's done right here on the canvas. We can shrink it down to, let's say, about half size. And let's click preview again. Notice how the gallery is automatically sizing the images to respect both the width and height that you've determined, as well as the number of images you've decided to show. So this is our recommendation as far as the order in which to do this. You wanna determine the number of images you want displayed first. So inside the panel, that's the next option after slider height. So let's just leave it on four for now. 
and then decide what kind of aspect ratio you want to use. If you have a large collection of really wide images, perhaps you want a wider aspect ratio. So from here, let's set our width. So let me bring this back up to the size it was at. And don't be alarmed if the editor doesn't reflect this change properly right away. You can always give it a quick refresh by just clicking the preview button again. There we go. And then the last step should be to adjust that height, and you can do so until you've reached your desired aspect ratio. So right now, things are displayed square, and if that's what I want, I can leave it as is. But let's say I wanted something more vertical, and in that case, I can just increase the height in the settings panel. So let's go with 300 instead of 200. And just like that, we get vertical images. And of course, if I wanted something wider, I could, let's say, lower the height back to 200. And perhaps we'll change the slides per view to 3 instead of 4. And there we go. It automatically adjusts to fit the other parameters as you've set them. So let me switch this back to 4 for now. More options here. We have transition direction. Of course, you've got horizontal and vertical. Now keep in mind, if you decide to use vertical transitions, your pagination dots will be moved to the side of the carousel, which is exactly where the scrolling arrows also sit. So it's recommended that if you're using vertical transitions that you disable one or the other, either the dots or the arrows, so they're not sitting on top of one another. Transition style, you've got slide, which is this traditional motion, and then you've got cover flow, which is that 3D turning view that we saw in the demo. Now, if you decide to use cover flow, you may want to use an odd number of slides per view, typically three. You can see that since I have four, which is an even number, that there's no way for the carousel to feature one central image flat. If I were to set this to three, we get a nice central featured image for every slide. Transition time allows you to speed up or slow down the action, and space between slides allows you to configure the padding between the images. So we could bump this up to, say, 20, giving us a little more space between them. Cool. Now after all this, we've got a large collection of toggle options for various features. So first is full height mode. This makes the slider full height, just like the superhero slider, as we saw in the live demo. And just like Superhero Slider, when you enable this, it's going to bring up an option for header height, which will allow you to deduct the height of your header on your page so that the slider won't extend beyond the viewport. I'd also recommend checking out the Superhero Slider tutorial video by Steve, which explores this function in greater detail. Enable Center Slide. Now, similar to what I was just discussing before about there being a central image, this option allows you to have an image be centered even if you have an even number of slides present. In that case, you'd see a 50% partial view of the outer images on either side. And this is the option you'll want to enable if you're looking for that simple classic carousel display, where you have one center image with two partial images on either side. However, in this case, you'd want to set the slides per view to two instead of three. Let me show you. Let me enable this for a second. And let me put back my transition style to slide for now. When my slides per view is set to three, you can see how it displays three images in full. Now, if you want to achieve that cutoff view of the outer images, you'll change the slides per view to two. And just like that, you get that classic carousel look, if that's what you're looking for. Back down to our toggles. Autoplay, of course, allows you to make the carousel scroll automatically. Loop mode allows an infinite number of clicks on the left or right arrows, allowing for the images to loop themselves into view, as opposed to just simply stopping on the last image. Enable grab cursor. This allows you to transition slides with your cursor, similar to how you might on a phone or a tablet with your finger. And then lastly here, you can hide the arrows. You can enable or disable the pagination dots. And finally, allow navigation via pagination dots. This would allow you to scroll through the images by clicking said dots as opposed to just the arrows. This might be a good option if you decide to have vertical scrolling and if you disable your arrows. This would allow your users to still advance through the slider by clicking the dots on the side. Really quick before we close out, let's jump over to the design section of the settings panel. We have a couple of options here. Arrow color allows you to select from a few options here for the arrows on either side of the navigation of the slider. We have pagination color as well, which gives you a whole color picker here for you to determine the color of the pagination dots if you have them enabled in your slider. And caption styling, we have all the styling available for the captions within the actual images themselves. 
Everything from font, font size, color, the format, the alignment, and the text direction. And of course, all of the classic spacing customizations available just like every other widget. So that's it, everyone, our carousel slider widget. Lots of parameters here, making this a very powerful and versatile slider for any page in your architect site. Don't forget you can view documentation for this widget and any widget on our website with the handy link that's included here on the bottom of the settings panel. Have fun and play around, and if any issues or complications arise, drop us a note and support, and we'd be more than happy to assist. Thanks again.